Man, let me tell you, it's freezing today. We had a hard cold front come through two days ago. Let's see, I think this is the, yeah, it's the third day that it's been really, really cold. And of course, with those cold fronts, you get those northwest winds that just dump water out. Really reshuffled the deck since my last fishing trip. The stuff I did that day is not going to work today. Maybe later in the day, but certainly not right now. Water temperature is 53.7. That's pretty cold for South Louisiana. So that's gonna make this probably a redfish day, probably some trout as well, at least I'm hoping. And I was running through this canal, heading to some different areas, and I saw just a lot of kind of activity along the shorelines, telling me there's some bait in here, maybe some game fish as well. So I'm gonna make a quick pass in here. Water's about five and a half, six feet deep. So I'm hoping some of the fish that are in the surrounding marsh got pushed into this canal. I'm gonna make a quick pass, see what I can do. I don't even know what the water looks like yet. Doesn't look too bad though, so. Let's see. All right, if you saw my most recent video, you know I caught most of my fish on a holy jolly colored matrix shad. Still got it on from that last trip, so that's what I'm gonna start with today. This water's a little more chalked than what I fished in on my last trip, but still not bad. Really good visibility, probably about two feet. So this bait should be good today. I got no idea what I'm gonna catch in here, if anything at all. So it makes it fun. Okay, so I'm already observing something that I'm not real pleased with. The tide is still rising here, even though it's about to switch and fall. I checked a buoy very near here and it's already fallen there. And I'm fishing into that current and it's rolling. So I'm probably going to run down this bayou and fish my way back, but I'm going to give this just a minute. All right, there's a deer. There's a deer right up there. I've never seen a deer in this marsh. Let me show you this. Hopefully this is coming out on camera. It looks to be a doe, I don't see any horns. Yep, look at it, definitely a doe. That's incredible, I've never seen a deer here. I don't know where it lives, it's not a ridge here or anything. She has no idea I'm here, <laughs> as loud as I'm talking. Hey, hey, yep, I got her to look up. Now she's looking at me, but she doesn't care. Flicked her tail, look back down. I got this camera zoomed as it possibly can be. <laughs> But I know it's still looking pretty far. The deer is probably 60 yards away, I'd say. Absolutely incredible. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglius Sporting Goods. Here comes company. <laughs> Dude, you see that deer? <laughs> There's a deer on, I mean, maybe 50 yards back. That's what I'm wondering. Like, there's no ridges here. It, it, the thing was 50 yards from it, couldn't care less. I kept yelling at it to get it to put its head up. It'd look at me and just keep eating. Crazy. That's my buddy, Justin Bowles. He's a fishing guide. He's got a charter today. So the good thing about fishing this way with this low water and cold water is you can sit in one spot and just sink the boat. The bad thing is you gotta cover some water because you gotta find where they are particularly in a long straight canal like this, this fish could be anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is just cover maybe 100 yards at a time and run down and cover another 100 yards. There's no guarantee I'll find any fish in here, but I am pretty confident I'll find fish somewhere today. All right, there's a fish. There's the first fish of the day, and it is a speckled trout. All right, that was really kind of weird. <laughs> I just let the bait sit. I was almost dead sticking it when he hit. Never felt the hit, he just felt pressure he was there. Keeper fish, he took it pretty deep, so that's good. All right, got a note where I caught it. All right, there's a fish. Nope, he spit it. All right, this canal has definitely failed me. <laughs> One speckled trout, that's it. I've covered some ground too, so it's not a matter of just not running across fish. I just don't think there's a lot of fish in here. It's kind of surprising. But whenever I explore the marsh at any time of year, I keep my eyes peeled for deep water. And so I got a few spots in mind inside the marsh. They got some deep holes. I think I may run there and go hit a bunch of them and see if I can find any speckled trout because they could really be stacked up in them. Last cast. All right, fish, I announced it, last cast. You know what you're supposed to do. All right, I'm heading on. All right, I'm fishing from the back of the boat. 
I know there's a deep hole right around here somewhere. I'm just not sure exactly where it is. And my depth finder's back here, so I really want to pay attention to it. So I'm kind of fish my way toward it. I didn't make a big move at all. I'm not far from where I was just fishing. Okay, the water just fell off to 12 feet. A veritable canyon in this marsh. 14 feet. 15 feet. 16 feet. 17 feet. 18 feet. <laughs> I don't remember being quite this deep. 18.2, now it's rising back up. All right, so I gotta see how I'm gonna set up here. Fish could be anywhere, if they're anywhere. All right, spot number one was a dud. This water's just ripping through here, and those fish would have to fight that current, although there are some eddies right here. I was hoping they'd be, maybe be holding in. But I really like how this water looks in this bayou, so I think what I'm gonna do is run up the bayou and fish my way back with the current and just cover some water and see if I can find a, a school of fish. Odds are they're somewhere in that bayou. Just gotta locate them. All right, I'll give you a little time check. Right now it's 819. And I gotta tell you, it's been a grind. I've got one fish in the boat, that's it. This cold front we had really, really changed things. And so far I'm striking out with everything I'm trying. I still feel really good about the day. We've got some great conditions. I found some pretty water. I know if I keep plugging away, I'm gonna find some fish, just a matter of where. And look, I like catching fish just like everybody, but these are the days I really kind of enjoy, where it's a bit of a struggle and you gotta kind of figure them out. There's a fish, all right, all right, I think that's a keeper red. Right in this Tornas. Let me spot lock. You can tell that water's cold because this fish is just not fighting. All right, come on, big boy. All right. Look at this poor fish. He got hit by a prop. Look at that. Hopefully you can see that. Look at that. Something hit him. You can see the three lines, but we will put an end to his pain. We're gonna put him in the ice chest and take him home. All right, so far it's been one here, one there. I definitely have not found anything that's really gotten me all that excited. So I'm gonna make a bit of a move and go see what I can locate. Now, I've got some other deep holes I wanna hit. I think I'm gonna try that next. I'd really like to get on some trout. So I don't feel like I'm fishing very smart today. This water temperature's down, 52, 53 degrees, and the tide is screaming out. And so, you know those fish are not gonna be in those high current areas. They're just too lethargic. So it really makes sense to try and focus on some dead ends. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of dead ends in this area I'm fishing. I'm in a canal now, but it's broken through at the end, so it's got water racing through it. I know where I could go get in some water that's, that's gonna be deep and dead, but it's about a 30 minute run, and I just don't wanna run that far. So I'm gonna try and force the issue here. Hopefully I can run across some fish. I figure even with all this water moving, I can find some eddies, some dead water areas that have a little bit of depth and hopefully also have some fish. I'm seeing some bait today. Really impressive, as cold as this water is. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Matrix Shad and by Fitzgerald Fishing and by Seto New Orleans and by Versamax Quartz and by Death Grip Jig Heads. Oh, another rat red. What a shock. Where are the big reds? That's what I want to know. They are not where I'm fishing today, that's for sure. About a 13, 14 inch fish. Oh, it's getting hot. There we go. Oh, another red. Another rat red. What else is new? All right, dude, I should have let you fight longer. <laughs> You're gonna get the fight again though, I promise. Go ahead, be free. This is Rat Red Day, National Rat Red Day. I want to declare it. What's the date, like November 28th, I think? We're gonna call this National Rat Red Day. I'm call my congressman. Okay, starting to see some exposed bank here. It means that water's really getting low. That should work in our favor particularly on these redfish, should force them to group up. So days like today make me really grateful 
to live where I do. I mean, this has been a grind. This has been a very, very slow day. And yet I've probably put eight to 10 fish in the boat. I mean, that's a stellar trip in some other states. So I've got nothing to complain about. But when your expectations are high, eight to 10 fish seems like not a whole lot. I'm still confident. Let me see what time it is. It's almost 10 o'clock, so I've been fishing probably three and a half hours. So I've definitely got some time left to burn, and I'm bound and determined to find some fish. <laughs> we'll see if I'm successful. I don't know. So far, I'm just surprised how slow it's been. As I mentioned, I don't think I'm fishing all that smart today. Kind of trying to force some things that just aren't there. But hope springs eternal. Maybe my luck will change. There he is. Please be a trout. You are a trout, yes. <laughs> All right. Broke the trout ice. Man, it's been a while. Hey, big boy. Man, you are cold. I see why your buddies are not feeding. I almost hate to touch you. No, I was just barely dragging that bait. There's a fish. That's a red but not a legal one. Feisty one though. Feistiest rat red of the day. You win that award, buddy. It's better than a participation trophy. Where are your older siblings? Where are they? All right, it's the second Trinas I've seen with dirty water pulling out of it. That's not a good omen. That means everything in the backwater is all dirty. So as this tide continues to fall, more than likely the water's just gonna get dirtier. That's not gonna help. Man, I'm getting all kinds of little pecks, which I know are just from little redfish. They've been plaguing me all day. <laughs> that one left me a scale. That was nice of him. It could have been a trout. Doesn't look like a redfish scale. If it was, it's a really little one. So I've made a change to one of the best baits for tough days in the marsh, and that's a single gold Colorado spinnerbait. I've got this one teamed with a 1 16th ounce depth grip jig head and a limbo slice matrix shad. You can almost always catch fish on this rig. It's my go-to when things are just not working out. Oh, there's a fish. I know what you are. I know what you are. Another rat. This one fell for the spinnerbait. <laughs> Change bait, same result. This is like number 12 or so on the day. Incredible. He's about 14 inches, bigger than some of them, but still not big enough. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, that's a bass. A little bitty bass. That's a throwback, but it's a start. Ooh, the fish is cold. All right, so if you're a regular viewer of the Marshman Mass on channel, you know that I frequently get asked for exact locations of where I'm catching fish, and I just don't share that information with the general public. And the biggest reason why is because things change from day to day. And if you're expecting to go to a spot that somebody caught fish yesterday, if conditions have changed even slightly, which, hey, they always do, you're probably not gonna have the success that that guy had. If you watched my last video, you know I was right here Three days ago, water was pouring out of here like it is now. It's pulling out of here right now. The difference is it was sucking really clean water out of here. It actually made the bayou look dirty, even though the bayou was nice and clean. Today, the opposite effect is going on. The water coming out of this Trinas is dirtier than what's in the bayou. I can tell you there's probably not any fish right there. Now, I'm going to throw the exact same thing I threw the other day, a black light Zoom Z-Craw. Actually, with this color water, this has probably got a better chance for success today than it did the other day. But I caught several bass here the other day, but I'm very pessimistic that I'm going to catch anything today. Now, I'm here. Obviously, I'm going to fish it, but I bet it's not going to happen. Believe me, I'd like to be proven wrong. That would be fine with me. And this is one of the problems with fishing the same area over and over is you kind of nostalgia fish. This is a spot I caught fish in last time, so I, of course I'm gonna fish it, but it just doesn't look good today. It's much better to go find new stuff that looks good that day. Of course, I found some stuff today that looks pretty good and I'm not exactly setting the world on fire. 
which some days are just that way. It's a grind and you gotta take what you can get. All right, one thing I also remember from the other day is that near the mouth of this bayou, there's a 10 or 12 foot deep hole. Now, none of the holes that I've hit today have paid out, but hopefully that one will. So I'm gonna kind of burn out of here Maybe throw a spinner bait on my way out and wait till I get to that deep hole and then try and jig it for some trout, maybe even some reds. But this is not gonna happen. I'm not gonna waste a lot of time here. So we got a real hazy sky today. I mean, you'd say it's sunny, but there's really a whole lot of high clouds, just a thin cloud layer. It's probably keeping this water from warming up too much. I've been hoping things would warm up. A lot of times in the winter, in the afternoon, the flats will get a lot warmer than these bayous because the sun just pounds on them all day and those fish will actually move up and feed. You can run through with a cork and just really mop up. In fact, I'm probably gonna try that before the day is out if I can find some warmer water. I just checked my temperature gauge and this bayou is still only 53 degrees. That's chilly. And of course, redfish are a whole lot cold hardier than speckled trout are. Trout are wimps. They'll bite in low 50s, but they won't be in current. Redfish will stay active in low 50s. Upper 40s, trout won't bite at all. Well, eh, almost not at all. Redfish, however, will. They're just a whole lot less active. That's when you can really find them grouped up. And then low 40s, you might snag a trout, but you're not gonna catch one that's eaten. Oh, there's a fish. Look at you! <laughs> look at you, look at you. Maybe you'll fall off. Maybe I'll get lucky and you will just fall off. Another red. Undersized. Bye-bye. So today's a special day for my wife and me. My daughter's about five months pregnant. Four or five months, somewhere in there. And she and her husband are at the doctor today getting an ultrasound done, learning the gender of the baby. <laughs> and so they're going to reveal it to us tonight. We already have a granddaughter. She's 14 months old. So she's about to have a sibling in a few months. We'll find out if it's gonna be a boy or a girl. So my wife and I started our family young, and fortunately my daughter and son-in-law started their family young as well, because it's really great being a young grandparent. There's nothing like it. Somewhere around in here is a deep hole. You need to figure out exactly where. That's why God made depth finders. All right, I found the hole. It's 13 feet deep. Let's sit here and jig it for a minute. Be nice to pull a trout or two out of it. If we can get lucky. All right, it sounds kind of crazy to say this, but days like today are what I really love about fishing. I mean, it's been a grind, believe me. I've earned every fish I've caught, but it's days like today that keep me up at night thinking about what I could have done differently to maybe stack those odds a little more in my favor. And I find it hard to leave and go home on days like today because I just want to put something together. And I'm not leaving yet. I really should, but I'm not. I think I'm gonna go run way back in the marsh and just poke around and see what I can find. Now this tide is falling, it's getting really low, so I'm gonna have to be very careful. But I think I'm gonna go target some bass. They have got to be pulled out into these bayous. Have to be. They cannot be in any backwaters. So I'm gonna go run deep and see what I can find. And then I may finish the day throwing popping corks on flats to see if I can get any speckled trout. Water's still chilly. I hope it's a little bit warmer on those flats, and by then it really should be. I don't have a whole lot longer to fish, but just don't feel like I want to go home yet. <laughs> All right, I made a very sketchy run, <laughs> but I made it back into this little bayou that's got some really pretty water. It's a sign it's probably got some grass, so hopefully it's got some bass. Given how my day's gone, though, I'm going to catch nothing but rat reds, which that would be okay. There he is. There he is, what are you? Oh, that's a bass, that's a bass. All right, good fish. All right, good fish, there we go. That's a pretty marsh bass. That's a good fish. Ooh, he's barely hooked, look at that. <laughs> I'll tell you what that is, it's validation. Just feels good to come in here and do something you intended to do. Nice bass. Now here's some bad news. He hit a black light zoom Z craw, but I think I only have one left. Maybe I don't have any left. I have none left. All right, so I've got some of these goofy black glitter Z craws. I think my son uses them as jig trailers. Never use this color ever. I'm not really a big fan of it, to be honest, <laughs> but we're gonna give it a whirl. I won't throw this long though. I'll lose confidence in it quickly if I don't catch any fish. 
All right, it's really no fun fishing a bait in which you have no confidence. And I've got no confidence in this thing. This is my last cast and we're making a change. All right, I'm gonna go with another bait I really like. Watermelon Red Rage Tail Menace. I remember earlier it was not windy? It is now. There's a fish. There he is. I think you're a red. Yeah, he's a keeper. He is a keeper. I would bet my boat on the fact that he is a keeper. Don't make a liar out of me, dude. Look how fat that fish is. What have you been eating? What have you been eating and why were you still hungry? Gluttony, it's one of the seven deadly sins, dude. It's a lesson you won't live to learn. Yep, 16 inches. All right, boy. <laughs> On my menace. I, look at that. Oh, wow, hit me already. What was that? That had to be a bass. Had to be a bass. There you are. There you are. What are you? Oh, you're a red. You're a red fish. Come on, big baller. You're bigger than the last. I know that. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, nice red. Get in the boat, boy. Yes. All right. All right, all right, all right. That's a much nicer fish. Hooked right in the eye. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. That's nasty. Oh, I don't know how that happened. I'll get you a patch. You can look like a pirate. You won't need it where you're going. Oh, look at the raccoon. Look at that dude. Are you okay? Are you rabid? You freezing to death? Dude, I don't have any food for you. Look at this dude, he's just sitting right there. He looks like a baby, he's not afraid of me at all. Wish I had something to feed him. I don't have anything. Apparently this is wildlife day. All right, I'm not getting the bites I feel like I should be getting with this menace. I'll go with something a little more streamlined. Plastic worm or something. Let's see what we got. All right, so I got a blue U-tail worm on. See if that gets me a few more bites. There was a bite, but you know what? It's from a little red. There he is. What are you? What are you? You're a bass. You're a bass. That's what I was hoping for. All right, nice bass. Yeah, you see, we switched to that U-tail worm. In this cold water, I think that's a better bet. Almost right away, get this fish. There's a fish. Nice bass. Nice bass. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, good fish. Man, it's a fat, solid fish, huh? Hook nice and deep. All right, that sun's starting to get low on that horizon. I don't have a whole lot more time to, to fish. I think I'm gonna call it. Definitely kind of a weird day, but I was glad I was finally able to put something together. And it won't be long before I'm back out here. But right now, we gotta go find out what my grandbaby's gonna be. All right, so here's the sweetest grandbaby in the whole world. And she's about to be an older sibling. Now, of course, my daughter is a physics and calculus teacher, so she's not gonna do this uh, any type of easy way. I think she's got a volcano plan to reveal the, uh, the gender, so this ought to be interesting. Savannah's gonna pour the liquid in. Oh, a pig. Oh, it's a boy! It's a boy! <laughs> I knew it, Yay! I knew it. I called it. Yay! That was anti That was kinda lame. Can you say yay? It's a boy. She's like, so what? It's not me. Darker. All right, I'm gonna have a grandson. Really big day. Very exciting. <laughs>